For the latest information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic in Cupertino, please visit cupertino.org slash coronavirus. You all set? All right. Well, thank you for the opportunity to um, get on the road, uh, come down to Valencia here in California, and, uh, and uh, just have the opportunity to walk through a, a new lab that the state of California uh, has officially opened today. It, it was just uh, a few months ago, in fact, uh, less than 10 weeks ago, we announced uh, a new partnership with Perkin Elmer a partnership that would advance our goal to substantially increase the total number of tests, PCR tests, that we can conduct here in the state of California. Uh, we recognized a number of months ago that if we continued down the path we were on, we simply would not meet the demand, the need, and the desire by our epidemiologists, our partners, health partners, all across the state of California to provide for the ample accessibility, quality, uh, and equity uh, of our testing protocols, meaning we simply did not have the resources. Uh, instead of lamenting about that, and instead of you know pointing fingers and and you know um, you know reflecting on the fact that we could have, would have, should have uh, had a national testing strategy in this country, well, we decided to take a little bit of responsibility. We tried to take a little bit of the California ingenuity and innovative, innovative spirit that we're well known for. And we reached out to Perkin Elmer, and we reached out to a number of other partners to develop a strategy. Uh, and we were able to advance that strategy in a remarkably short period of time. In fact, quite literally, this process to build out this state-of-the-art lab that could provide upwards of 150,000 PCR tests from the time that we took the sublease, our Department of General Services, on August 24th to the time when Perkin Elmer finally got their certificate that allowed for the testing processing was exactly eight weeks, two months, to build out a facility. A facility was built out for a cost just shy of $25 million below our budget and within a timeline where we actually came in under our best case scenario. I, I, I have to repeat that because so often is the case, particularly uh, when we look at government programs at every level of government, often it's over budget, comes in months, years potentially, uh, beyond the deadline. Uh, in this case, none of that uh, was uh, the case. We were able to actually achieve an audacious goal, and we did so uh, with intentionality, and we did so mindful of taxpayers' money uh, and mindful of the urgency of this moment. And I want to speak to the urgency of this moment. The reality is 24 states over the last seven days in the United States of America have experienced record high cases of COVID-19. We're entering into the holiday season where people are more likely to mix. We're entering into the winter months when more people are more likely to come back indoors. We're entering into the flu season, uh, which will put compounding and competing challenges in our healthcare delivery system. This lab is happening right at the right time. This lab and our capacity uh, now substantial increase uh, by a minimum estimate of 75 percent increase in our total testing capacity here in the state of California is happening just at the right time. At a time when it's more challenging, not less challenging nationwide to get timely results, this lab also promises to get results back within 48 hours, but a stated goal within 24 hours. Never more than 48, but an absolute goal of a 24-hour turnaround. These are the PCR tests, what some doctors refer to as the MRI tests uh, that are available. These are the tests, if you get an antigen test and it tests positive, you are almost without exception asked to then get the PCR test to validate the antigen tests. Uh, we are now providing these PCR tests and at a cost to you and a cost to the taxpayers, that's one-fifth of the current cost, the average cost that we are currently uh, uh, paying uh, for PCR tests in this state. Uh, I want to repeat that and let me break it down a little bit more specificity. 
the average cost of a PCR test currently uh, is anywhere from $100 to $200. We average it out about $150. Just think about this. The state of California, as of yesterday, has conducted 18,440,000 PCR tests. Do the math. Average cost of those tests, over 18 million, $150. You look at the multiples of billions of dollars that we've spent on just our testing. We can't continue down that path. It makes no economic or fiscal sense. And that's why we want to disrupt the entire process and the entire system. And that's exactly what we're doing here in a very audacious and bold way in California. We're going to be able to get these tests down to $30.78 per test. Average $150, getting the cost down to $30.78. That's when we're fully operational at 150,000 tests. Once we get up to 100,000 tests, as we phase up, the costs are $37.78. Uh, so more volume, lower cost, lowest cost, $30.78 when we get this lab fully operational. 134,000 gross square feet in this state-of-the-art facility. Uh, some of the best equipment and some of the best and brightest uh, workforce that you can possibly assemble. Currently, we have about 300 people at this lab. When we uh, get up to peak capacity, we'll have 700 people hired to run this lab. State-of-the-art technology, state-of-the-art scientific know-how, and partnerships with Color, Perkin Elmer, and the partnership with this state that allows us the capacity to do what we believe no other state in our nation uh, can achieve. Again, happening exactly the right time when more pressure is being placed because of the increase we're experiencing around this nation in our case rate uh, and increase, particularly in our positivity rate and the need and desire to test, to trace, to isolate, and ultimately get us to where we need to go, and that's with vaccine. And so I, I wanted just to applaud uh, the partnership that was put in place but in particular, I want to thank uh, our GovOps team. Uh, you're probably wondering what's GovOps. It's just one of those state agencies that you only read about when something goes wrong. Uh, and we don't talk about when something goes right. GovOps identified this site and they brought and assembled, Yolanda Richardson and her team assembled a cohort and was able to produce a result in this design build framework where we were able to take something that I quite literally, I'm not exaggerating, typically takes three years to get done. And they got it done again in eight weeks under budget. Uh, and I just wanna thank that team and uh, her leadership for an extraordinary job. Perkin Elmer, uh, well known in the state of California. Any of us, I've had four kids. We've had four Perkin Elmer tests. For newborns, we partner with Perkin Elmer uh, for decades here in the state of California. It's a Massachusetts-based company, but it does business uh, in 150 countries around the world. They took a bold and audacious step, agreeing to provide not only the machines you see behind me, but all the supplies, the reagents, swabs, the whole thing. They produce it in-house, they have adequate supplies, uh, and they're guaranteed the capacity, again, to deliver on the promoted promise at peak, which will take a number of months to get up to 150,000 additional tests. This is additive. This does not substitute our existing testing strategies. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Yesterday, we conducted 120,765 tests in this state, just so I have 121,000 tests. Uh, this does not substitute our existing testing strategies and protocols. It will only allow more competition for cost in the space, more choice, reduce stress for agricultural workers, reduce stress in our schools, which will allow more availability, more access, uh, and ultimately reduce costs across the spectrum, not only to our Medi-Cal system, the Medicaid system, uh, but for employers and insurers themselves. We partnered with a third-party uh, payer, which will allow 
all the protocols and process to get reimbursed. Uh, Sutherland is their name, and we partnered with the logistics firm, well known here in the state of California and around the rest of the world, FedEx, uh, that will collect the samples. So true partnerships, partnerships with well-established uh, organizations uh, that get things done, and all of them now uh, uh, here operational uh, at this facility. In fact, they just started taking their first samples uh, this week. Uh, we just met with a cohort of individuals that are finishing their training, and every week you're going to see an increase total number of tests. Uh, the goal in the very short term is to get to 40,000 tests a day, and then we want to see those process and protocol in the first quarter of next year, uh, getting closer to the 150,000. That gives you a sense of the range. Uh, this was a big investment, $100.2 million of upfront money. As I noted, $25 million to build out the facility. Uh, $100 million uh, was for a series of the equipment and developing and establishing the framework of partnerships. We have a protocol, or rather provisions in our contract, that allow us to get reimbursed for the upfront costs. For every test that's conducted, $5.51 is set aside to help reimburse the upfront costs. We have protections for the taxpayers here in the state of California as it relates to claw back provisions in this contract. We have technological provisions that maintain that we will have state-of-the-art testing as technology changes, innovation advances. It's incumbent upon Perkin Elmer and the partners we've established that we're always best in class so we're not left behind. And we have best pricing provisions as well. If the costs go down for similar testing and modalities that the state of California, the taxpayers uh, are not left uh, in uh, the dust, so to speak. And so those were core principles uh, of the contract to protect the taxpayers and also advance our efforts to always be on the leading and cutting edge. And we are with this lab here today, but we want to maintain that leadership. And one of the reasons we took a facility this large, 134,000 gross square feet, is the ability to add on different capacity and genomics testing our capacity now to do pooled testing. And not just traditional pooled testing, we have some novel strategies of pooled testing that will also be working and advancing here at this lab. There's a long-term goal. Uh, we don't want this to be short-term. Uh, we look at the issues of communicable diseases and infectious diseases. is not a temporary reality in our lifetime. It's not just COVID-19 or SARS in this new incarnation. It's a likelihood uh, that will be stressed and challenged in the future, and so we're looking at provisions, uh, contract provisions on the sublease of this facility to potentially partner with academia, partner with local institutions, and other partners to potentially make this permanent and allow California to have something it's never had in the past, for that matter, allow the West Coast of the United States to have something it's never had in the past. So we fought boldly, uh, we advanced the strategy to deliver on our bold goals and vision, uh, and we, at least today, have delivered on the timelines and those promises. A lot of work ahead of us. No one's naive when you put an operation from scratch like this together, that there won't be challenges. Uh, but we are very, very pleased with the progress to date and very, very proud uh, to be here in Valencia uh, with this ribbon cutting and announcing the opening of this lab. Uh, just a, a few final points, because they're important. The case rates are going up here in the state of California positivity rate in the state of California, as of today over a 14-day period, is 3.0 percent. Over a seven-day period, 3.2 percent. Still substantially better than the overwhelming majority of states in our nation. However, total number of new cases, based on that just shy of 120,000 tests yesterday, was 4,014. That's the latest number of tests that came back yesterday, uh, testing positive. That number is trending higher was in the middle 3,000s last week. We're now moving back up a little over 4,000 now this week. Again, this is something we anticipated, and this is something we're not ashamed of in terms of the total tests and the total cases. Remember, more testing is a good thing. 
more testing is foundational and fundamental to getting around this disease and mitigating its spread. Testing, more testing is something we all should be promoting. And one should not be ashamed by identifying more cases, quite the contrary. And I want to encourage, I think one of the things we can all do well uh, is not focus as much on the total number of cases, but the positivity rate, which is so foundational. And the positivity rate you're seeing in some parts of the country, not just double digits, you're seeing 20, 30 plus percent positivity rates now in other parts uh, of our country. We're at 3.0% over 14 day period, 3.2 over seven day. But we are not taking our eye on the ball. We've got to box this disease in. More testing is foundational. But what you do after the test is the real test of the leadership we need to see at the local, regional, state, and federal level. And that is tracing and making sure we're isolating and quarantine individuals so they can recover and we can mitigate the spread for asymptomatic, pre-symptomatic individuals or those that are experiencing symptoms. Timely testing is foundational in terms of advancing those goals. Expertise, great technology, partners like Color, partners like Perk and Elmer, allow for those protocols to be advanced in real time. And I'll just end with this, having just gotten a PCR test, I'll get my results back shortly. Um, I was given a card about important information. On that card uh, is now a QR code that goes right to my cell phone uh, with all the privacy considerations, uh, respecting all of those protocols and privacy. But once we determine positive or negative, if it's positive, we have protocols that are also part of our systemic effort here to connect to our local health officers and connect to our tracing protocols. And that's, again, something that is important to highlight as it relates to this partnership we're advancing here today. Automating, leaning in, improving uh, on technologies and protocols and processes that two or three months ago did not allow this ease uh, and fluidity of transfer transferability of information and the like. And so with all that, I, I can continue, but I want to just say deep gratitude, not only Perkin Elmer, not only a team at Color, not only to our partnership, Sutherland and FedEx, uh, not only to Yolanda and her team, but to Dr. Mark Galley, uh, who originally presented this goal with our testing task force, uh, with a focus on equity and doing more for black and brown communities and making sure that we were preparing for the winter months in the second or third wave, semantic second or third wave of this pandemic, and to making sure uh, that we used California's purchasing power as we've done with masks, close to 600 million masks we have distributed in this state, and we have an inventory of 514 million masks today. As we did with masks, we are now doing with our testing. And Dr. Galley has led that effort. And so it's with pride uh, that I bring up to the podium Dr. Galley, uh, thank him publicly, uh, and express uh, my appreciation to his advisors and the testing task force for all their hard work getting us to this point as well. Dr. Galley. Thank you, Governor. Uh, as always, uh, you do an amazing job of really distilling what we're here to talk about. And uh, today, the first step in really getting a handle on the pandemic in California is testing. So many things that we do, we talk to you about wearing your mask, about keeping distance, about reducing mixing, and all of those are critical, absolutely critical to preventing. But when you're exposed, when you're concerned, or even when you're not, Having the availability of testing is that step that helps us understand where transmission is across the state. Every county a little different than the one next door. The north different than the south of California. This lab represents a true opportunity, not just to do things at a scale that really only California can achieve. I often say uh, scale is innovation in a place like California. Not many places can 
bring a lab up in this short amount of time and a deep appreciation to Secretary Richardson for her leadership and her vision to get this done on time and under budget. Uh, but really, the uh, opportunity to do something like this speaks to the point that the governor, governor made uh, towards the end around equity. We've been tracking the disproportionate impact of COVID on communities of color, on older Californians, on people who are uh, in more crowded living conditions in our urban areas and our rural areas as well. And this represents an opportunity to get one of the key tools to reducing transmission into those areas where we know transmission goes from zero to 60 miles per hour in the blink of an eye. And this helps us not only identify the cases, but target our other resources, which as we've grown them in California, we beg more strategies to target those. Working with our local community leaders, local elected leaders, public health leaders, to make the asset that is behind me a real tremendous uh, uh, gift for California to help us through this pandemic. And so it's with great privilege that I've had a chance to be part of a team to bring this to fruition here. And I look forward to how it helps us continue to do the work in the months to come to get, out, get around COVID and really ensure that some of the unfortunate increases that we're seeing across the globe, across the nation, that we prevent those here as much as we can. But I'll remind you that it starts with uh, our wearing masks, it starts with being really thoughtful about how we mix and keeping our distance. And especially when you're sick and symptomatic as we enter flu season and common other respiratory infections, common colds, that we think about what we do when we're sick and having symptoms because we want to be part of the Team California that reduces transmission across the state. Uh, the governor mentioned our testing task force who along with, uh, I have to call out particularly Marco Micha, my team, who really did so much to get this lab up and running and working day and night, all weekends to make sure we reach today, but also Dr. Gil Chavez, our co-chair of the testing task force, who really garnered the strength of that army around testing, understanding not just what we needed to do for this lab, but how it complemented other innovations in technology in testing. The governor talks about the antigen tests and many, many new modalities coming. You're hearing about them, uh, other places who can provide testing. This really is meant to be part of the backbone for testing in California, having this lab here will allow us to um, uh, work with the other modalities that we know are coming. And Dr. Gil Chavez, who uh, has been a, uh, become a close friend because of all of the, the work he does around uh, promoting equity and uh, equality around our COVID response, I want to invite Dr. Chavez up to say a few words as well. Thank you, Secretary Galli. It's a pleasure to be here today. As Secretary Galli indicated, the testing task force has been working very, very diligently since the governor appointed us uh, in making sure that we have access to testing throughout the state, that that testing is equitable so everybody that is affected for the, the, by the pandemic gets tested equally, that we have access in all parts of the state, and that we always, always introduce innovation we are very happy that this lab has become a reality. It will be the backbone of our efforts to increase testing access for everyone. But I'm here now, um, and I'm privileged to speak Spanish, uh, so whenever I get the opportunity, I'd like to address the Spanish-speaking community in California, so I'll switch gears and say a few words in Spanish. Uh, y le quiero decir a la gente de California que estamos en Valencia el día de hoy inaugurando un laboratorio que es un laboratorio que es de lo más moderno que existe para el, las pruebas del COVID-19, un laboratorio que nos va a permitir doblar la capacidad del número de pruebas que podemos hacer en el Estado, que va a asegurarnos que tengamos pruebas en todas las partes del Estado, las zonas rurales, las zonas urbanas, y muy importantemente que la gente que sufre primordialmente del COVID-19 tengan acceso a esas pruebas inmediatamente. También nos va a permitir que las pruebas sean hechas rápidamente para que los pacientes, los médicos y las autoridades de salud pública puedan actuar prontamente. Y también introduce unas cosas de innovación muy, muy importantes 
para que podamos nosotros en California seguir manejando la pandemia como lo hemos hecho de una manera muy, muy ejemplar. Así que yo quiero decirles a todos que no hay razón por la cual un paciente que necesita hacerse una prueba en California no lo pueda hacer. Hay bastantes pruebas en todas partes, el acceso es fácil, el acceso es gratuito, así que si tiene necesidad de una prueba, por favor, hacérsela. Muchas gracias y creo que el gobernador regresa. Thank you, Dr. Chavez, and again, thank you for all your hard work and, and the testing task force. And uh, most, cannot impress upon folks more the imperative and the importance of equity and maintaining that equity lens as it relates to uh, the efforts that we're advancing here today or that are being advanced because of all the work that has been put into getting this lab and this facility up and operational. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, we are happy now, of course, to answer any questions. Uh, Governor, I'm Nigel Duara with Cal Matters. I'm asking questions on behalf of the press corps. First one's from KPCC. Flu season peaks in late January. Is this going to be up and running in time to make a difference? Yeah, in fact, we talk in terms of the twin demic. Uh, you talk in terms of the flu. Flu season uh, is upon us. Encourage people to get a flu shot, which I did a number of weeks ago. Uh, it will put pressure on our healthcare delivery system, this twindemic. The challenge, of course, uh, for many of us is trying to adjudicate whether or not we have the flu or maybe we have COVID-19. And one of the benefits of this lab is the testing modalities that will be advanced out of this lab will allow us to test for both. And so absolutely, the question specifically about the peak of the flu season in January, uh, we will be fully operationalizing uh, in that first quarter uh, and the capacity to test for both flu and COVID uh, concurrently exists and will be a big part of the work that's done out of this lab. Sure, next one's from Cal Matters. Our understanding is that this is gonna be a phased in ramp up of testing. So the question is, certain communities are harder hit than others. What's the plan for prioritizing who gets this first? Yeah, the testing task force, Dr. Chavez, particularly is focused on the issue of prioritization and equity, uh, the distribution of options and opportunities uh, in communities, rural as well as urban in parts uh, of our urban communities that are underserved. The challenge has been one of scarcity, not having the abundance, not having the ability to test and get the test results back in a timely manner. Now, with our ability to substantially increase uh, the number of tests, we'll be able to distribute uh, and administer tests in a much more equitable way. But I would be remiss if I didn't invite Dr. Chavez back up uh, because of her, his expertise in the task force work in this space, and he can answer more specifically about what his expectations are and what he is demanding of this state in terms of prioritization to underserved communities in the state. Doctor? Thank you. So that's a great question on prioritization. We want to make sure that everyone that needs a test in California can get a test. So in reality, by doubling the capacity, we will have access to anyone in the state that needs a test. One thing that I want to emphasize that I think it's very important is that besides this laboratory, we're also introducing modalities for people to actually get their samples taken in a way that really makes it very easy. We are going to be deploying mobile units. We are going to be deploying buses to places where they're needed. We're going to be partnering with community-based organizations, with churches, and with others so the testing is available everywhere where people need to be tested. So thank you for the question. Are there any specific communities that you are looking at that could need the help right now? I mean, we're, we're trying to get ideas of, of where you might be sending these resources. Right, so the question is about whether there are specific communities that we're targeting. And so our goal through the testing task force is that any community that is impacted by the pandemic has good access to testing. In California, we know that people of color African-Americans, Latinos uh, are very heavily impacted by um, the pandemic. We know that essential workers have a very special impact. So we want to make sure that those communities have prompt access to testing, testing that is not just available everywhere, but also turns results back very quickly so people can act on those results. Thank you. 
And I should uh, just note, I want to encourage anyone that's watching that wishes to get a test or uh, is wondering if there are tests even available uh, in their community to go to the covid19.ca.gov website, covid19.ca.gov website. On that site, you'll see a testing bar and will allow you to put your zip code in and determine uh, how proximate you may be to a testing site. And I want to remind people there should be no stress, no anxiety around the ability to afford a test. There are ample strategy, well, ample uh, locations where we will pick up the cost of those tests. And I want to encourage people, again, not to look at the issue of cost ever as a limiting frame or limiting belief in terms of one's uh, desire to get access to a test. COVID19.ca.gov. Next question is from the Associated Press uh, regarding reopening in schools. Do you believe a uh, facility like this or th this new lab specifically uh, is going to encourage more districts to reopen for in-person learning? And if so, how? And which ones? Have your children returned to the classroom or do they continue to learn remotely? They, uh, well, just on my children, they started to phase in. My four-year-old, my seven-year-old, nine-year-old. So they're phasing back in uh, to school uh, and we are phasing out uh, of our uh, very challenging uh, distance learning uh, that we've been doing, so many parents are doing up and down the state. I, I remain, um, uh, well, let me once again reinforce uh, a point of view. Uh, we absolutely believe uh, that the social-emotional learning uh, that occurs in the classroom is the best place for our kids, certainly the best place for their parents as well. And so it is absolutely incumbent to do everything in our power uh, to provide support to our districts so that they can safely reopen. Emphasis on safely reopen. Way you safely reopen is you have to have the appropriate personal protective gear. The state of California provided two months of PPE for our schools throughout our school system. We want to provide additional supports to access additional PPE and also provide additional resources for testing. We had a $5.3 billion allocation, uh, which we had legislature, rather, we collectively approved uh, to allow flexibility to our school districts to address the issue of learning loss. That flexibility allows those districts to procure resources, to reposition, uh, recondition, uh, invest in people as well as capital uh, to improve uh, the environment so our kids and our paraprofessionals, not just our teachers, are healthy when they do go back into school. Specific question, however, was does this lab help in alleviate some of the stress around testing? And the answer is yes, by definition. We move from a scarcity mindset to one of more abundance. Still, we'll have to do more. We recognize that. But the ability to substantially increase not only the testing in terms of volume, but the test results decreasing in time will help advance those efforts by reducing the stress of the existing system, which was limiting in terms of testing and test results and now providing more opportunities. And in turn, uh, we hope will aid and advance the efforts as it relates to our school reopening when those schools and those districts are ready to safely reopen. This next one comes from uh, NBC4. Governor, earlier this week, LA Mayor Garcetti announced a pilot COVID testing program based on rapid antigen technology to generate test results in 15 minutes or less without the need for lab processing and bring the cost down to about $5, $10 a test. At this point, antigen is not as sensitive as PCR and can miss more positives. So are you worried that Californians committing so much money here to technology that may soon be supplanted by faster and cheaper alternatives? No, I think it's, it's additive. I think I'm encouraged by it. Um, we should encourage more antigen testing. We should encourage more innovation. We're part of an X Prize. The state of California is part of an X Prize to push out the boundaries of innovation and discovery as it relates to new modalities of testing, new strategies on transport media and reagents and the like. I think we should encourage that. But at the end of the day, the backbone, the real architecture, uh, it's gotta be our PCR testing until something else breaks through. Uh, again, I said in the outset, 
If you do have an antigen test, doctor will then redirect you to get a PCR test. We're just providing now more accessibility, more opportunity to get these PCR tests at a substantially lower cost. I'll remind you at one-fifth the current cost. Why the federal government hasn't done this, why we haven't seen more scale and more leverage in terms of our Medi-Cal system, Medicaid federally, or our Medicare system federally is beyond me. But the state of California, the nation's largest state, 40 million uh, people living in the state, is doing our part, and we hope that will encourage others to do more still. Okay, the next question is on flu shots. CNN is wondering if the governor has any comments on the first reported case of a Solano County resident being infected with both the flu and with COVID. It's easy to suggest getting a flu shot, but many people relied on free shot clinics at their workplace. Since so many people are out of work or are working from home, is there any statewide plan to ensure that Californians have access to free or low-cost flu shots? Yeah, well, I have my doctor here to talk about flu shots, and, uh, and I got mine, and you're correct. We produce about 19 million, well, we provide about 19 million flu shots a year. By the way, the reason I know that is that we built off uh, that protocol to build our vaccination plan here in the state of California that we submitted to the Department of Defense and CDC a few weeks back. Uh, but when it comes to flu, uh, I go to my doctor, Dr. Galley, uh, to answer all questions because I trust his response a lot more than a politician's as it relates to flu shots and flu seasons. Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, indeed, we know that a number of Californians depend on getting flu shots at their workplace, and some individuals aren't going to work right now. They're working from home. Uh, we've uh, been working with our local partners across the state, local health departments, uh, who have been doing for years uh, free flu clinics, supporting flu shot clinics uh, across their entire county are doing more and more of that now. You can reach out to your local health department's website to learn where there might be free flu shots available. Of course, your own doctor's offices, your clinics uh, in your communities are doing all of the innovative things we would expect in California uh, for uh, easy uh, outdoor flu shot clinics. So we believe that there are a number of ways, alternative ways this year, given the COVID situation, for you to get the flu shot. And we encourage you, without haste, get your flu shot. We think, of course, people may uh, get flu, they may get COVID, but the flu shot is one key line of defense in this year a pretty complicated fall and winter ahead of us that we can do our piece to reduce our own risk, reduce the risk in communities, and make sure that we're as safe as we can be as we enter the holidays and winter. Next question. Okay, this is the last one here. Another one from Cal Matters. <laughs> we are continuing to hear about unemployment claimants with frozen accounts or funds missing from their EDD Bank of America debit cards. Is this an issue you're confident that EDD and the bank can resolve, or would the state consider altering how it delivers benefits, such as offering direct deposit? Well, we'll, we'll consider whatever, whatever strategy, it's the best strategy to get in a timely manner uh, these checks distributed to people uh, that deserve it uh, and uh, warrant that support. Uh, there's been some issues, the B of A, we're working through those issues, and of course we have uh, socialized all of the reforms, the new team we assembled at EDD, the ID Me protocols that we put in place as part of our reset a few months ago to address, or a few weeks ago rather, to address some of the fraud issues which are not unique to the state of California, but were significant. And so all of those efforts are underway. A team, Yolanda Richardson and others, Secretary Richardson, part of GovOps, uh, working to support ED, Department of Labor, and others to advance that cause. But look, we're not ideological about how we do that, and uh, we are very cognizant about the need not only address the situational challenge, but also address the medium and long-term challenges to once and for all fix the EDD, I can assure you, is underway. 
with that, uh, we need to be on our way uh, and continue the rest of the tour. Uh, but I encourage everybody uh, that looks more information about testing in the state, wants to know more about uh, all of the supports as it relates to isolation and challenges uh, in accessing uh, whatever uh, support they possibly may need related to this pandemic, go to that covid19.ca.gov website, covid19.ca.gov website. Uh, provide you that kind of support we hope that you're looking for. We always end with the mantra that the most important non-pharmaceutical intervention as we look forward to the day when the vaccine is made uh, readily available to the vast majority of us is wearing a face covering, wearing a mask, continuing to practice social distancing, physical distancing, washing your hands, and avoiding mixing outside of your household. I recognize how challenging and difficult that is, and I also recognize that there's tremendous amount of misinformation in that space, and that includes uh, the number of outlets that have written about our Thanksgiving guidelines that simply don't exist. And so I want to encourage people uh, that are recording, reporting, sharing information, uh, that they make sure that they have the facts. We will be providing that information shortly, but we have all of the guidelines we have put out on that covid19.ca.gov website. Take care, everybody. For the latest information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic in Cupertino, please visit cupertino.org slash coronavirus.